everybody, and welcome alongside Ross Smith, soon to be joined on the field by Nat Borchers. My name is John Strong, filling in tonight for the newlywed Jake Zivin. Now, before we dive into this game, breaking news in the last few minutes, Timbers forward Fernando Adi playing his final game for the Timbers tonight. No details yet on where he is going and when, but we do know this will be his last game in green and gold. What has he meant to this club? Well, he's been a ton, John, because the, the big presence he's been on the pitch, but the important personality he's been off the pitch. He came at a time when the Timbers were in desperate need for a number nine striker and coming in he was a different kind of striker that the Timbers were used to seeing he could bully center backs but he was poetic enough to get around the pitch and combine with the likes of Valeri, Darlington Agby but most importantly showed up for the big moments and didn't he do that in bunches not the well this is something special this is something of real quality as Nagby gets on the ball look how many players from the White Caps team that he dances around he's been wide but that doesn't shake him off he keeps his balance he gets all the way of the center back Austin and unleashes an unbelievable strike the pace the power to take it into the back of the net you see from the angle it's not favorable for Nagby but he takes it on anyway such as his confidence and he talk about confidence how about that look as he said how about that goal to start things off was the exact start that the Timbers needed and we're wondering where that space was going to be coming around for the Timbers. How are they going to find the way through? And it starts off from the width. It's a lovely ball for Powell to run onto. Lovely weighted. And then he's going up the left wing back, Beasley. And I thought his moment had passed him by, but he drifts a nice, lovely, delicate ball right into the path of Blanco, who has made up the ground. He's got the run of his own. Mark Blanco, as he comes, just appearing the top of your screen. And doesn't he take that on well? As this ball is dropping, you just look how Blanco opens up his foot and he controls the pace of the ball nicely just to pick his spot and suck it away. Final example, slightly different. Get the ball into the hands of Jeff Fentanella. Now just watch these two players, Wondolowski, Magnus Eriksson, they switch off. While they switch off, Blanco switches on. But so does Atanella. He knows this team wants to play in transition. Atanella has the ball. He bowls it out to Blanco, and now, to the surprise of San Jose, the Timbers are playing through line. Three passes, Valeri on the ball. He took a quick little peek there, head back down. He knows where he wants to go. He's already got the pictures. Armenteros, he sees that little bit of a space. This guy could find his way through a closed door, no problem. Ball comes through, nice way to pass, and then it's that surprise factor again, continuing on. Little bit of magic, little bits of patience from Armenteros. And again, another great goal. Three great goals for you. So this SWAT team with the Swedes scoring goals is scary at the moment. Okay, now if we do one 1v1 one one situation, I want you to just pay attention to how much they communicate, how much is talking right now between the two defenders. And given this is only one scenario out of an entire game, and given I'm already out of breath. Ready? Force in outside. Force in outside. Because I have them outside. Now, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well done. <laughs> great strength. As you can see, so much involved in one little area of the game. The defending individually, the defending as a unit makes it nice and strong. Coaches, thanks for the session there. I can't believe I haven't ended up with any stud marks <laughs> in me from you too. It shows it did okay. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you. We're here at MLS Cup 2018, Atlanta, Georgia, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. This is pretty cool. We're in the exact seats where the Timbers players are going to be sitting before they make their walk towards the pitch. In this time, not a lot of time to think. What are the nerves like for the players? Well, it depends on who you are. If you're an experienced player like a Ridgewell, a Chara, a Valeri, you've been here before, you've done that. So you're not thinking, oh man, what's gonna happen? You're ready for the game. But if you're an inexperienced player, you're a bit younger, maybe Jeremy Ibobasi, you're thinking, man, I don't know what to expect. You know? So of course, there are gonna be some nerves going on in that stomach. It's a long walk towards the pitch. A lot of time for players to be in their own mind. A lot of time for, for them to think. Yeah, certainly. And, and for me, it was a little bit about getting a, a nice balance between having some fun and some banter in the locker room, and then at the same time being intense and focused as I'm walking out to the field. This is pretty cool. So as we're walking along and you're in your line, one behind the next, Atlanta United, you start to see their locker room come up, and the players from there will start to file in as two teams come in to meet. And as we get into the tunnel, it's a unique situation because VIP fans can actually watch 
both sets of players, the both teams come into this area. They talk about Atlanta United and the etiquette in the tunnel here can be quite intimidating. A little bit of back and forth going on. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm looking at a guy like Darlington Nagby and I'm thinking, wow, you know, I, I know this guy. I'm going to give him a big <laughs> hug. He's going to smile at me. But for other guys like Leandro Gonzalez Perez, I'm like, I don't know this guy. So he's probably going to be a little bit intimidated or intimidating me but because we don't know each other. You've given a little bit of staring off, ready to kick him in the first five minutes. That's right. This is a really cool moment. Like a gladiator walking into a coliseum, 73,000 plus will be making their way to watch MLS Cup final this match. It's the biggest in this league's history. Matt, you've played in crowds this size. What's the noise level like? Oh, it's deafening, Ross. It's going to be so difficult to, to communicate just with your own teammates, to even hear yourself think at times, but it's also going to be energizing, I think, for, for both teams just to be a part of this massive event. I know for me in big crowds, I always had to locate my parents just to make sure that they were safe so I could settle into the game. Did you have any rituals at this point? Well, I would always try to locate my wife first and foremost, and I would kiss my ring finger, and I would just give her a wave and just let her know that everything's okay, and then you know, I'm ready to, to get to work. It's all these different things that players have to do to make sure they're focused from the first whistle from the referee and that whistle it can't come quick enough well against the run of players the Timbers continue to deal with all kinds of pressure as soon as they get on the ball doesn't Abobasi handle this well but how about this release from Chara he's not even in your screen but watch him come in there he is flying it still needs the ball from Blanco who just caresses it into the right area. And doesn't Shara handle it well? He takes a touch around the Mondo and then just slides that ball in. 2-0 for the Timbers.